In a recent video, I was only half joking that if academia didn't have logical fallacies, it wouldn't have any logic at all. And I thought I should do a video following up on what I meant by that. And academia relies on using logical fallacies to brainwash you and me and everybody else. And if you look at logical fallacies, there are some that are pretty obvious that are used by academia. A being the appeal to authority fallacy. They want to be the authority and you have to believe them, even though they're, the reason they're an authority may have nothing to do with the actual argument they're trying to present. B, the genetic fallacies in play a lot. They make their decisions based on where they go to school, what country they're from, even the color of their skin. And yes, I don't like thinking of academia being openly racist, but over the last few years, you see people saying, well, if, if it, the study wasn't done in the US or Europe, we can't trust it. And that's racist. There's no two ways about it. And that's a problem. And certainly people from countries that are outside of Europe or the U.S., North America, they see it, they feel it, they face it. It's a reality in science and has been for a long time. And this can get even worse into ad hominem fallacies. I won't go into details. And then the bandwagon fallacy. This is one of the biggest ones of all. Scientific consensus is the bandwagon fallacy. Yes, we would like to believe that scientific consensus means that each scientist sits down, looks at all the facts, all the evidence, all the theories, all the competing theories, talks with all their colleagues, and they sit together and go, yeah, th this really is right. But no, it doesn't work like that you get a couple guys do that and then they convince their colleagues and then you end up with a consensus they put it out in the media and everyone else is just taught well this these are the facts because that's the way schools work they teach you facts they don't teach you how to critically think through the scientific method and the scientific problem so Everything's the bandwagon fallacy, which is all these people can't be wrong because they all believe the same thing. Well, they all believe the same thing because they've been brainwashed. They've been told the same facts and they haven't been told why those so-called facts could be or maybe certainly are wrong. As my videos show, it's pretty easy to poke holes in the facts if you do a little bit of investigation. You can find serious flaws in almost every major theory in physics, which is why we need to keep working on it. And then another fun one is the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. And if you haven't heard of it, this is a sharpshooter whose shirt shoots against the broad side of a barn and then goes over and paints the bullseye where his best grouping is. And that's what scientists do all the time, especially in physics. They talk about how their theory is the best at making predictions and, and is right about everything. And it's the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Look at the cosmic microwave background predictions of the Big Bang. Most of them were off by a factor of 10 or 20. But now they say, oh, the Big Bang was perfect prediction of the cosmic microwave background. No, it wasn't. The best predictions actually were based on light energy, not, co not the Big Bang energy. But they go back and they say, oh, we made all these best predictions after they fudged their theory to match the observations. Physics relies on the Texas sharpshooter fallacy 
to make their claims about how great their theories are. And then we can look at just how the academic system is built. So they set up a set of degrees where the higher the degree, the better authority you are, which is an obvious appeal to the authority fallacy. The degree you have has no bearing on whether you're, the argument you're making is correct. And then they talk about what university you attended or where you taught at and how most of the professors come from the top dozen universities in the U.S. So you're basically looking at, are you part of the bandwagon? Are, are you part of the echo chamber? And people from universities that aren't among the top tier are looked down on and their arguments and papers aren't weighted as highly the genetic fallacy and then you look at the number of papers as if producing papers and numbers had anything to do with a logical argument or the number of value of grants that you've earned yes academia needs money they need grants but that doesn't mean that the arguments you're making are right. In fact, people who are trying to get funding and make grants are known to stretch the truth a little bit from time to time. So no, you can't trust that and you can't trust the arguments. And then after you do publish papers, you have numbers of views and numbers of downloads and they're nice. I love that I have subscribers and viewers and get downloads on my papers because I know my work is getting out there. But that doesn't say that my argument's right. That doesn't say it at all. In order to determine an argue, argument's right, people have to step through the logic and the evidence. And by the way, I should have put logic as a total different category. People often talk about what they think the scientific method is, and they never do a logic check on their hypothesis to see if it's even possible. They go straight to the observations and evidence. And so that's a step where academia avoids logic at all, at least in the scientific fields. And then passing peer review. And once again, we're in the bandwagon fallacy. Are you part of the echo chamber so that your idea passes peer review? Or maybe the current theories haven't worked for 50 or 100 years and there needs to be a new paradigm, but the peer reviewer won't pass it because if you come up with an idea that might be a successful new paradigm, it's going to make them look like a fool for their entire career. So no, the peer review system doesn't work. And what's worse nowadays is some of the papers that do get through that aren't standard physics are clickbait. Let's face it, a lot of what gets out into the public media gets there because it's clickbait. Editors are choosing papers to publish based on them being good clickbait. That's not good science at all. And it's certainly not logical. It's not an argument for something being true because it's good clickbait. And another one I love is number of citations. Once again, we're in the bandwagon fallacy and we're in the echo chamber. People using the same argument over and over again, usually that's been failing for 50 or 100 years. So citations doesn't really tell you whether or not the paper was correct. Uh, sometimes I cite something because it's incorrect and it's an example of something being incorrect. So in that case, it's, it's not even useful at all in terms of something being a valid argument. And then we have, what level of professor are you? Are you an assistant or a full professor? Tenure track, do you have tenure? Are you a retired professor? 
who's gone a little kooky, as they love to say. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not an argument is actually correct. Some people do their best work when they're young, and yes, some people are braver when they're older. I certainly am. I don't have anything to worry about. I'm retired. So I can say what I really think of people's scientific ideas and not have to worry about it because I'm not looking for a job. And then you have things like award and invited lectures. And I've gone through the list of Nobel Prizes and half of them are wrong. A hundred years from now, we'll know that they weren't right. At least half of them. The ones that are based on experiments, of course, they're right. If you have actual experiments that you've run, for the most part, they're going to be right. They meant not going to be overturned. But a lot of the theoretical work, it needs improvement. And some of those we already know, but, but we're going to know a lot more. And these are just a few of the things, but if you think about all the standards academia puts on, like an H index or other indices for how good of a professor you are, that has nothing to do with whether your argument on a certain topic is right. It has nothing to do with whether the theories are right. And so, as I said, academia, if it wasn't for logical fallacies, it wouldn't have logic at all. And which is a good reason not to trust academia. And I didn't even mention, I follow physicists on Twitter and there's a meme of not trusting engineers that are doing physics or science work. There's a joke about how how many engineers are crackpots? Well, engineers aren't inherently crackpots, and most engineers could be scientists, and some scientists end up doing engineering. There's not that big of a difference between being a scientist and an engineer in capabilities, certainly in training on certain topics. And that's where academia really does help. It does give you training and it does help you solve certain problems. And there are certain fields where without that training, you couldn't do the job. You couldn't do the experiments, but getting the training alone doesn't mean that you're the authority and that your argument's right and everyone else is wrong. You have to dig into the details of the argument. And I'll say anyone who watches any of my videos, listen to what I say, listen to my arguments, think about the arguments. Don't just believe me because I say it. I try to be logically rigorous. And if I make a mistake, point it out in the comments. I'd love to go back and fix my mistakes. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please like it, share it, and subscribe for more. And I want to thank my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. You're a big help to me. I do have books for sale if you want to learn about my research. And thanks for watching.